God will see you through. You can see amen. 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 I was thinking on the way to church today about, about uh, if, if your brother does you wrong, what do you do to repay him? <laughs> Amen. Uh, brother, brother, the spirit was already working on me, buddy. Amen. <laughs> I was thinking how that sometimes uh, uh, folks repay me, amen, in the way they do it. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Uh, you know, if, if they don't think maybe I've I, I done it just right or said it just right, then it they want to pay me back or something. Amen. Or show me how to do it or something. I don't know. But uh, preachers are a funny breed. Amen. Amen. When I was growing up, it always seemed like there was somebody that was wanting to compete with me. Amen. In my home church, wherever I went, there was always somebody there that they, they thought they could do it better than I could do. <laughs> Or they wanted to do it better than I could do it. And it was always a competition. And I thought, Lord, I didn't know I had to get in this thing to prove myself to anybody to you. Amen. And uh, so I quit trying. Praise the Lord. I said, Lord, bless them. Look at it. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. You can. Go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, praise the Lord. Uh, but I was thinking about that this morning. I was thinking about, hey, amen, when somebody doesn't major out to you. Amen. Our brother uh, Ed was preaching about, teaching about how that we're asked to go a mile, go a second mile. Amen. Amen. And we're asked to give coat, give two pairs of pants to it. Amen. You know, go the extra, the extra uh, mile to it. But then, you know, a lot of times you see folks that don't, they don't major up to that. And that's why I was on my heart this morning, the brothers. Brother Scott got up and preached that message about how we've got to be forgiven. Amen. We can't do anything for God unless we forgive. So if somebody doesn't uh, doesn't shake your hand, amen, don't snub them, run them down and shake their hand. Amen. If they won't come to you, go to them. Praise God. Well, I'll show them. They're going to be that way. I won't even, even look at them. You know. And uh, our pastor was telling us that we ought to be forgiven. Amen. If somebody don't come shake your hand and you get offended to it, you got to forgive them. Amen. Amen. But Brother Rene didn't come and ask for my forgiveness. Amen. He didn't say they had to. Praise Amen. the Lord. He said, you have to forgive them anyway. Amen. Amen. So, well, I, I invited them to go eat with me. They won't even go out and eat with me. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Fix a meal and take it to the house. Amen. And give it to them. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Fix them a pie or a cake or something. To take it to them. Praise God. Amen. Well, yeah, I ain't going to do that. Amen. Well, I, I, that's part of that forgiveness. Amen. You got to be willing to go that extra mile. You got to be willing to do that extra thing that if you're asked to. Amen. You, you can't repay. You can't repay evil for evil. Amen. You got to repay good for evil. Praise the Lord. They do evil to you. The Bible said, don't try to get vengeance on them. The vengeance belongs to the Lord. Thank God. He said, you just go ahead and do good to them. Praise God. If you'll do good to them, thank God. It'll be all right. Amen. So, I, Brother Scott already preached that, but I, I was feeling it. Amen. It amazing fear the Lord. You're connected in the Spirit. You don't even have to talk about what the Spirit wants to wants to say or how He wants to move in the service. Praise God. He just He just speaks through the vessel. Amen. He, he's just like a broadcasting station. Thank God. Everybody's in tune to Him to hear Him. Mm -hmm. Can you say amen? If you're in tune to the Spirit of the Lord, you'll hear what He's saying. Thank God. Say it out. 
Amen. I, I, I'm not bragging, but I've been, I've went to many revivals with other evangelists preaching. When I got in there, I knew what they was going to preach for the priest. Why? Because God's already hearing from the Lord. Amen. Come on, sir. Now, when you're in tune, you can hear it. But if you ain't in tune, you're not going to hear it. <laughs> Thank God, but that ain't the message that I'm preaching tonight. Amen. Thank God. I'm talking about encouragement. Don't that? We need to encourage folks. Encourage folks to do the Word of God. Encourage folks to be forgiven so that God can forgive you. Uh, uh, give out and then be given unto you. I encourage you to uh, uh, obey the Word, obey the, the Scriptures, and, and do what He said. And if you'll do all these things, uh, then the Lord will just run. And bless you with so much you ain't got room to hold it off. Thank God. If you'll just be encouraged to do all these things for the Lord. Love you, enemies. Amen. Isn't that hard to do? Love you, enemies. Bible said, love them and forgive them. Isn't that hard for us? Amen. But isn't that what the Lord wants us to do? Praise God. Don't do evil to them, but do good to them. Amen. You know, I have people come up to me over the years and, and boy, they just want to tell me all that God's doing for them. And what do I do? Most of what I learned after the first two or three times, just listen to them. And when they get through, just say, praise God, they didn't have wonderful. And just say, praise God, they didn't have wonderful, let it go. Because you know you ain't going to out top them because if you come up with something, they're going to have something else to say. And they're going to try to top that. So I laugh the first two or three times. I just, after they go through all this 30 minutes, about everything they're doing, about how many times they walked on water, and how many folks got up out of the graveyard, and all these other things they've done, I just say, brother, isn't that wonderful? Amen. There you go. Because, uh, you know, you. You can't, you can't compete. God don't even want us to even start that. Amen. You see, that's part of that male domination uh, that has been handed down from generation to generation that all men have, have been under. Hello? And been expected to be the male dominant. You know, this 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 thing that has been bred into us. Hello? I'm just telling you the truth. Come on, church. Amen. But, but really behind Things they just really don't uh, don't know. Amen. They 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 put out a pretty good show. Amen. That they that they are the male dominant man, and, and that they are the male. They they control the household. They <laughs> Lord, amen. Till they get home, then we find out really who is they. <laughs> thank God. Thank God. Amen. She said, "I let you be the head, but I'm the neck that turns the head." Thank God, thank God. Don't forget it. Praise the Lord. Anyway, we we have that and that shows up. And it shouldn't show up. We should have the place under subjection. Amen. How many believe we should have the place under subjection? Amen. And this male dominant mess and having to compete and having to be the best that there is, you know, the best and everything. That ought to be that just to glorify God. Just to manifest the name of the Lord in our life. To lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's the only reason why that we do what we do. Is to lift up the Lord. Amen. Because all that I do is just going to be gone one of these days. And, uh, uh, and folks are going to gather around and say he was a pretty good old boy. And that's going to be about the end of it. When I'm gone after a while, there won't even be nobody probably coming by. Amen. To clean my hips, uh, headstone, praise God, or get the weeds off my grave. Oh, Lord. Amen. But I'm not going to be there anyway. I'm going to be gone to be with the Lord. So let them do what they want to do. Praise God. That's this old house I used to live in. I don't live there no more. Thank God. I want you to be encouraged. Amen. I want you to be encouraged. Be a good cheer. Thank God. I like folks to be happy. That's the reason why the Lord's always faith. I'm not, hey, I don't sit around and try to study how to come up with stuff to make you laugh about. I don't, I do not. 
That is not in my, I, that is not, no, I will never do that. I'll never look through trying to find stories or jokes or anything like that. Life is full of all these stories anyway. They don't need to have none nowhere else. Hey Amen. They, they follow me. They just run after me. All these old, they, they, I mean, things have to happen in my life. They just follow me. Hey Amen. I can't help it. Praise God. But I believe we ought to be joyful in what we do for the Lord. How many can say amen? Amen. amen. And if you're in the ministry, you probably found yourself in some of those predicaments sometimes. And, 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 and after it's all said and done, you, you get laughing about it. Say, oh, that was the funniest thing I ever said in my life. How did I get in that? Amen. You know, we was under a tent Bible over in Dinesburg, Tennessee. Anybody know where Dinesburg is? Amen. We were in Temple Bible. And we was in our little camp. We sitting out there. Me and Sister Green there. Brother Dr. Tittle and my uncle. And, and Sister Vernie and them. They were gone off. And riding around seeing kin folks or something. And we sitting there. And then all of a sudden there was a lady walked into the walked into the little trailer. And I was out on the tent there. And, uh, and that woman sat down across that little dinner table in that little trailer there. And looked at Sister Green and said, I'm full of devils. She was, she was demon possessed. She was, uh, uh, she was active in witchcraft and uh, all kinds of different things because she'd been in Holy Ghost services and been delivered. But guess what? She would go back, hunt that same spirit that was cast out of her. And he would bring heaven worse. She got worse and worse today as time went by. Amen. She was very known. Everybody, every Pentecost church in that town knew Eleanor. Amen. And uh, we're grateful. God brought the lyrics one night in that. Amen. And then a few months later, I heard she was right back in the same mess, same shape again. But see, the situation like that is just life. Things happen like that. Paul found himself in bondage and found himself on his way. Amen. Because he was a Roman citizen and uh, he asked to be tried as a Roman citizen. Not as a commoner, not as uh, 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 one that was in slavery or what have you. But I am a Roman citizen and I have the papers that I'm a citizen. I want to be tried. Amen. Before the courts of Caesar. I want uh, all, my, all of this to be brought out before them. Even though it, it could have been easy. He said, no, I don't want that. I want to go all the way. Why? Because the Lord said, that's the order. That's what I want for you. I'm going to bring you. He, he told him that when Ananias came down through there and prayed for him. He said, you're going to go through many things, but you're going to speak to the king. You're going to be known all around. But many things are going to happen. You're going to be shipwrecked. You're going to be snaked in. Thank God you're going to be left in the deep. You're going to be stoned and all these other things unto you. But thank God in all the midst of this here Paul saying to a bunch of sailors on the boat, be a good ship. Thank God I believe in the God of heaven. I know who I belong to. I know that he's able to deliver. Can you say amen church? Acts 27, 21 But after long absence it said Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from grief to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sailed with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. 
to the voice of the word of the Lord from the man of God, the man of God told them. I mean, you know, they was in a safe harbor, and uh, every, all the sailors knew that this was an unseasonable time to be sailing, and that it was a cautious time. It was always a, a, a wind or a storm that always blowed out of the out of the east or whatever, and, and that it would always bring storms through there. But oh, they had a peace time. This was a calm time. There was no wind. There was no storm. Everything looked better. He said, no, we better not go. We better stay here. Sometimes God tries to tell us to be still. Sometimes we won't listen to Him. Amen. 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 We think, oh, it's going to be, you know, you know how I feel about that. It's greener. Amen. Uh, on the other side of the fence. And it's only greener over the septic. Open. I'm going to go. Man, it's going to really 
I'm going to take off. Praise God. Amen. And a few weeks later, here I come back home. <laughs> Dead broke, never bill I got past to. Amen. Amen. Must not have been God's will. No, it wasn't. Amen. God, God wasn't in it. God was saying, hold on, wait just a little bit. I've got a plan for you. I've got a plan for you. It's going to work out. It's going to work out in my timetable. Amen. Just wait on me. It's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Amen. You're going to be a voice and many are going to hear. But you got to wait on me. Amen. And let I say go. You can go. Paul didn't have no choice. He had some tiered soldiers. Amen. Strapped to it most of the time. I'm sure they turned it loose on the boat, but there was no more for him to go. Amen. But most of the time he was chained up to them. And wherever he went, wherever they went, he went. They had to go to Yahweh. He found himself shipwrecked. Now listen, what did, it, what did these scriptures say here about he said God's going to, not going to be any man's law, a life lost. Only the ship. The ship is the only thing that's going to be lost. You know when they, they began to, after a while, they began to, 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 to cast famines to see how deep the waters look. And then they, be, they begin to cast and find the waters are shallower. They're coming shallower and shallower and they keep casting. And they knew then that they were drawing near the land. And every man feared that the wind and the uh, waves would dash them against the rock and would kill everyone. So they started getting ready to jump, jump off the boat. And what did Paul tell them? He said, hold it. If, you, if these men jump overboard, they're going to die. But if you'll stay with the ship, you're going to live. Come on, church. Don't get scared. Don't let the circumstances don't upset you. Don't think that things are going to be better on the other side. Don't think things are done. I want to do something different. I don't like what I'm doing. I want to do something different. Brother, you better stay with the boat. You better stay where God tells you to stay. And not just jump up and jump overboard. If you knew you're going to drown. But if you just hold still and trust the Lord. He's going to see you right up.
skin and bones and that. I know there's folks that don't have anything. Amen. We got plenty here in the United States. We got too much. Come on, church. But listen, he says, as long as you stay with the boat. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is where God took me tonight because I wasn't planning on going there, but it's for the Holy Ghost has took me there. Amen. It lets you know if you want to live, you better stick with the boat. Because if you jump off this boat, you're going to drown. And there's been many of them that have jumped ship and they're drowning right now today. There are no spiritual life in them. There's no anointing in them. The power of God doesn't live in their life anymore. Why? Because they jumped ship. And be 
the law of science tells that I, I see him trying to figure out where the beginning of the universe was. Amen. And it's time to look through the telescopes to see. And it's time to see the beginning. And it's time to say, how can they be something from nothing? It said there was nothing. And then all of a sudden there was something. God said, I'm going to build me one of them. <laughs> Woo, glory. Amen. He said, knowing your heart is good for your day, but I'm building a different one. Amen. Come on. He took his word. Let me know Jesus was the word. Let me know Jesus was the word. You know, go first John, uh, first chapter, St. John, you read about him. Amen. Amen. That he was the word. And God was a spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said that right. the word of the Lord come down and walk in the cool of the day. Right. So I didn't think Jesus showed up to Bethlehem. He was in the beginning. Amen. Yeah. He came forth out of God. Amen. Yeah. He was the manifesting word of God. Everything was created with Jesus. 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 He didn't have that name then, but he was Jesus. Jesus. Well, what bothered me was, 
Amen. Uh, uh, the ushers that make sure to put their hand on your shoulder if you got too loud. And uh, the announcement, don't come try to shake Brother Swagger's hand. He, he can't shake hands with everybody here. Amen. So don't come and try to shake his hand. Amen. I thought that's well and good. I like him. I enjoy his music. I enjoy his preaching and all like that. I like somebody that I can go shake hands with. I like somebody that I can go hug their neck. Amen. Tell them I love them. Appreciate what they did. Can you say man? I, I don't like I don't, and then all the rest of the same way. They got handlers. <laughs> handlers. People that go down the hallway to make sure that the hallways is clear so they can come out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that was Jesus. Stand in man. I got a question. Thank God. We got a